way and he's probably going to destroy all them bricks that are in the way there too yeah they'll throw a track on the machine though if you're not careful you need to be careful because you're so close to the fence that you're not going to be able to turn off the fence the crew that we have they're slightly newer and so i'm training them by just kind of throwing them into the fire and letting them learn the hard way which is the best way to learn you need to come in at a stronger angle already there you go forward turn there you go go forward watch your wires in front of you we're getting started on that hole back there tomorrow we'll get this whole job wrapped up and we'll be able to get their brand new sewer installed and get everything all buttoned up in one more day of, of working well can you hold on can you fit yeah you can't you can't go that way if you park this on gravel and you do a 360 degree turn you'll throw a track gravel gets up underneath the tee uh knocks it off a little and it just throws it yeah it'll throw a track so fast I got you. hey before you start digging you need to call spencer and find out how wide the shoring is that he ordered last thing you want to do is dig a hole that's too wide for the shoring coming in when you're digging with shoring you're you're tied to what the shoring can give you i'm gonna come through with oh shit oh god there we go See how I'm going to take my left tooth and put it right on the line, the paint line? Yeah. My left tooth is on the paint line, and now I'm going to come in and straight to the machine. I'm going to do the same thing again, left tooth on the paint line. I'm not going deep, I'm just scratching my, I'm basically formatting where my hole is going to go. Okay, so now I'm taking my right tooth and putting it on the same paint line, left tooth. So now, because I've overlapped one tooth, now that I've overlapped a tooth, my ditch will not be 48 inches wide. It'll probably be like 46. All right, so as we're digging these sewers, it's a whole lot of decisions that have to go in to be factored before we can ever put a bucket in the ground. We have to decide where the machine's gonna set. We have to decide what orientation we're gonna dig it. We have to decide where we're gonna put the dirt. We have to know how deep we're digging. Depending on how deep we go, it depends on if we need shoring or any other trench safety methods to be in place. Then if shoring is gonna be involved like it is here, we rent all of that shoring. We'll eventually own it, but for right now we just rent it, it's easier. So we have to know how wide the shoring is that we have coming so that we don't over dig our hole. Because if you dig the hole too wide, then your shoring is useless and it, it can't work. And you're not allowed to shim it or anything like that. So those are all things that we have to know before we can even put one bucket in the ground. Once we get to the point of putting the bucket in the ground, then we have some other processes that we follow to learn how safe we are within all those measurements. As you saw earlier, I was using the bucket to kind of scratch the hole out. The last thing we want to do is have our hole be wider than 48 inches. So we kind of have to scratch it out in a way to make sure we're going to be compliant. Now that we know we're compliant, we can start getting deep. There's one other thing involved with all this though. We want to be digging as close to that fence as possible, but there's a gas line that's located in the way because anytime we're digging anything, we always call for utility locates. They come out and they spray paint on the ground their best guess of where they think utilities are underground. And it is a guess. They're using equipment to find that utility much like we used our equipment to find ours. But sometimes equipment malfunctions and sometimes their guess is wrong. Sometimes the equipment steers you in the wrong direction. Other times they aren't using equipment. Sometimes they're using maps and the maps will tell them that the gas line is one foot on this side of the fence. Well, I've been on jobs where they've located it with maps and they read the map upside down and the gas line was actually one foot on the other side of the fence. We've dug and dug and dug for lines before that were never there because they did the mapping wrong. I always like starting with a deeper ditch outside of the two foot limits of the utilities because now it gives me a place to throw all my stuff. Okay, gas line's running this way. We're gonna hand dig perpendicular to it, but now I can dig this and just throw it all in the hole and I don't even have to worry about scooping it and moving it or anything. Well, that's fine. We can just bring, the, bring this ditch all the way to the fence. Gas lines are typically 18 to 24 inches deep. Anytime we're within two feet of that mark, we have to hand dig it. I take a shovel depth like this all the way through, and then I get in the excavator. Now that I've cleared this little bit, the width of our ditch, we know the pipe is not within this height. We've cleared this elevation from being a possibility come through like this a lot of it too just depends on how hard the dirt is if the dirt's super soft then you can come through and go even deeper you see how easy it is to dig this whenever we're not even having to worry about scooping dirt out of the hole and of course all the outside opinions will be like you're just making yourself work harder 
that whole machine makes it a lot easier to do work. Clear this height, then we can come through with the excavator and bring this ditch out to here for this same width and start dropping here. And eventually we're gonna find the gas line in here. They, they have two feet either side of this, so it's kind of the easiest job in the world. Four foot window, paint in the middle of it. They get plenty of allowance for error, but now we know right now this gas line's not within the first, I don't know, six, eight inches of earth, right? So now we can get in the excavator, come back through here, right next to the fence, drop down to this depth. You're gonna see your teeth come into the ground. You just don't sink your teeth deeper than what we've cleared. And then you can pull all this off into the hole. And then we start the whole process over again. We'll be at a new elevation about here. This is gonna be somewhere around eight feet deep, high sevens, low nines. The locator was kind of jumping around a little bit. We just gotta keep doing that all the way down until we find the gas line or until we don't. If we get three feet deep and we still haven't found the gas line, we gotta go another foot to four. After four feet deep, if we still haven't found it, we're gonna say that it's not on this side of the fence. I personally have never seen a gas line deeper than three feet. You know, we'll err on the side of caution and call it four. That's what we're looking at. That's an old steel gas line. Yummy. Tomorrow we'll get this whole job wrapped up and we'll be able to get their brand new sewer installed and get everything all buttoned up in one more day of, of working. So the rest of this job goes pretty quick, but now you've seen a real quick tutorial on how to get started with an excavation when you've called in locates and how to dig around those locates and find them underground safely without damaging anything. So until next time, we'll see you later.